Welcome to Somerset Success Strategies. Today I'd like to talk about the role of governance. Now, my thought process all started back on, uh, in early September when I was reading a Forbes magazine article uh, in their September 1 issue by Paul Johnson. And Paul talked about uh, the three roles of government in his article, Let Economies Cure Themselves. So he opined that the three roles of government are as follows. Number one, to provide external defense. Number two, to provide internal order. And number three, to provide for an honest currency. Now, completely separate from that, I just happened to be provided with an opportunity to get involved in a consulting project for a company uh, that has over a billion dollars in sales and about 1,700 employees in four different manufacturing facilities throughout North America. To date, these four plants have operated completely autonomously for the most part. They've had their own senior executives from presidents, CEOs, to HR, uh, to finance, to everything imaginable. It was uh, basically four completely separate and distinct organizations. Now the parent company, uh, which just happens to be Japanese, has decided that they want to consolidate what they've been uh, operating as essentially these four separate companies into one company for all of North America. So setting aside legal and tax implications, my charge was to assist them in determining which functions should be brought into this new combined central corporate unit and which functions should be left at the plant level. So it's a little bit analogous to this whole idea of what is the role of the federal government versus what is the role of state and local governments. Now, this is obviously not the first time this question has come up in uh, government or business either one. As a matter of fact, you'll find a, a fairly wide uh, array of questions uh, or, or opinions on this topic. Now, I really liked Paul's take on the role of a central federal government and began to wonder whether or not you could use that same type of thinking when you're talking about central corporate governance issues. Now, the reason why I really wanted to find a principle-based answer is I've just found in life, whether we're talking about government, business, or just your personal life in general, that it's really important to have overriding principles and uh, foundational philosophies, or otherwise you can very easily fall prey to creating uh, the essential equivalent to a Frankenstein monster. Now what I mean by that is that if you make all of your decisions in a micro sense, in a vacuum, without overall guiding principles and philosophies, you can end up with a country or a corporate structure or personal circumstances that although you could justify any one of the individual decisions that you've made in and of themselves, that when you step back and take a look at the total effect of all of them, really the whole creation doesn't look very pretty and doesn't work very well together, much like this analogous Frankenstein monster. So this uh, Dr. Frankenstein approach just doesn't work to build sustainable organizations that reach their full potential. So what I would like to do is take a step back now and take a look at Paul's assertion about the role of central government and try to convert that thinking to corporate for-profit governance. So let's start with his first assertion that the role of a centralized federal government is to provide for external defense. Now in the corporate world, uh, there's some things that immediately come to mind. You have to have 
represents a security department. And then also IT really is electronic security. And then your legal team, as they really defend you from either proactively or reactively from legal attacks. So you've got legal attacks, you've got electronic attacks, and you have physical attacks, security, IT, and legal. That's part of your defense team. Now also, if you think a little bit further, really customer service is a defense function. It's really the way that you corporately defend yourself from the attacks of competitors. So I would throw customer service in that mix. Now also, you'll hear people say that the best defense is a good offense. And there is some truth to that. So what are your offensive capabilities in business? Well, really that comes down to the role of marketing and sales. How can you aggressively attack the market to get more market share, more customer share, these types of issues? So I think it's fair to say that marketing and sales really are part of the way that you defend yourselves in a proactive manner. Now Paul's second assertion was that the role of a central federal government was to provide for internal order. And I couldn't agree more. You simply cannot have a civilized society of any kind, including business, without having laws and an enforced justice system. And the same is true in business. And I think it's really the core essential role of the HR department. And one of the strongest arguments as to why that needs to be driven and led by your central corporate team is this whole idea of providing for internal order. You've got to have rules and an enforcement system to have a civilized society. Now Paul's third assertion was that central governments should provide for the maintenance of an honest currency. And in the corporate for-profit world, that's really the function of the finance unit. The finance unit's mission, among other things, but is to make sure that you don't have any surprises when it comes to cash flow or capital needs or any of these major overriding life-threatening issues for a government or a business, either one. So finance, I think, fits into these departments that should be handled or led from the central corporate office. So if we summarize all of this and we try to use Paul Johnson's formula for government and translate it to business and using a little bit of creative thinking, you come up with a short list of central corporate functions as follows. Security, IT and legal, customer service, marketing and sales, HR and finance. Now this is a list that I think people would pretty commonly come up with if they were asked to define the role of central corporate governance. But somehow it makes me feel better knowing that we've arrived at that list in a logical, principle-based, philosophically-based manner so that we have something to double-check our answer against and make sure that we aren't creating this Frankenstein-style monster in our corporate governance. And my hope is that if we use this principle-based approach, we can guard against the evils of creating a bloated and ineffective central corporate bureaucracy as opposed to a properly functioning and supportive central corporate function. So those are my thoughts on the role of governance. We would really appreciate knowing your thoughts on the role of a central corporate governance. We would really love to hear from you. Thank you.